Well, thank you. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful. Well, for President Miyares, thank you for their very kind and generous introduction, and also for your outstanding leadership of this great institution of higher learning and for the invitation to serve as this morning's keynote speaker. To the University System of Maryland Board of Regent member, Mr. Bill Wood, to the University of Maryland University College faculty, other distinguished guests, and most importantly, to the graduating class of 2018. Can you believe this day has finally arrived? How great it is. And although it may be raining outside, there's only sunshine in this room today. And I see it on the smiles of your faces. What a very special occasion. What a phenomenal class. And I am truly honored to join you this morning, along with my wife, Linda, to share in your very special day. Please join me in recognizing your classmate, Officer Jermaine Montgomery, for that wonderful rendition of our national anthem. Jermaine is a police officer in Baltimore, Maryland, who works full time pursuing his academic goals with a family. Today is earning his second degree from UMUC and has also been selected to be the student speaker for this morning's commencement. He is very proud representative of this great class. When you depart this morning's ceremony, you will walk away from the secure world of academia here on the campus of UMUC and enter an unpredictable and complex world, a world in which opportunity will become your watchword, where success must become your mantra, and where persistence and determination are the norm. And if you don't already have one where your family simply wants you to get a job. <laughs> the first thing you'll notice out there in the real world is your prof professors are not going out there with you. They're smart people. That's why they're called professors. They've been out in the real world, and that's why they're staying right here at UMUC. <laughs> Seriously, I want to congratulate all of you, and especially your parents, sisters, brothers, aunts and uncles, your children, family and friends who encouraged and supported you on your journey that has led to today. In countless ways, large and small, remembered and forgotten, you were there for them and now they are here for you. And that's why this commencement is in as much their celebration also. So graduates, please join me in a round of applause in recognizing all of your family and friends. After receiving the invitation to provide remarks at your commencement, I asked my college sweetheart and wife of 35 years, Linda, what I should talk about, since she has listened to me give hundreds of speeches. As usual, she was very frank and direct. And she told me that it doesn't matter, because with all the excitement in the air, the graduates probably won't remember anything you say anyway. <laughs> And she added, you'll be fortunate if they remember your name. <laughs> Frankly, I was taken aback. After all, I previously served our nation as a four-star general. And today, I'm a C-suite executive at a multi-billion dollar firm. Clearly, they'll be interested in listening to me, I said to myself. <laughs> then reality began to sink in. And I thought about my college commencement several years ago at Virginia State. And I'm embarrassed to say that not only had I forgotten what the commencement speaker spoke about, sadly, I couldn't even remember who the commencement speaker was. <laughs> so graduates, I have one small request. If you don't remember anything else I say this morning, please remember my name, General Vi, <laughs> or at least General. 
In this regard, many of you may be wondering why an Army General is speaking at your commencement. And although there may be several reasons, one that I share in common with over a third of your class is that I'm also a first-generation college graduate. Growing up in rural Virginia, my father's greatest desire was for my brother and me to attend college, for he knew the importance of an education even though he was not afforded an opportunity to gain one. He unexpectedly passed during my freshman year, and so he was not there to see my brother and I graduate, but I know how very proud he would be today. I've often remarked that although he only had a fifth grade education, he had a PhD in common sense. <laughs> Over my career, I've met a lot of very bright people. However, I've yet to meet someone as smart and wise as my dad. In my 36 years of wearing the uniform of our nation's army, and now as a corporate executive, I've had the unique opportunity to meet and work closely with hundreds of successful people from all walks of life and from all types and levels of professions. From the Secretary of State to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, to corporate CEOs, business leaders, university presidents, educators, lawyers, doctors, engineers and scientists, church pastors and professional entertainers and athletes. What I've discovered that is that regardless of where they started in life, no matter where or the conditions from which they came, they shared some common traits, traits that set them apart and contributed to their success. And if you'll bear with me just for a few moments, I'd like to share a few of these with you, because I know all of you that our desire to be successful and receiving your diploma today is only the beginning. First of all, you must believe in yourself and be confident in your abilities. You're better prepared than you think you are to begin or to continue a successful life and career. After coming back from failure, Steve Jobs once said, and I quote, you have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, or whatever, because believing that the dots will connect somewhere down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart, even when it leads you off the well-worn path. Others have felt the same way. While in prison, Nelson Mandela kept a scrap of paper that contained the words of a poem entitled Invictus that ends with the famous lines, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. After becoming the CEO of Xerox, Ursula Burns said, and I quote, I was raised by a wonderful mother in the rough and tumble public housing projects on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Many po people told me I had three strikes against me. I was black, I was a girl, and I was poor. But mom didn't see it that way. She constantly reminded me where I was didn't define who I was. These prominent individuals were successful because they believed in themselves and not what others thought of them. Second, success, true success requires hard work. There are no shortcuts to any place worth going in life. As stated by the legendary football coach Vince Lombardi, the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. Some contribute success to luck. And while there may be some truth to this, throughout my career, I've found that the harder I worked, the luckier I got. Third, establish and maintain a reputation for excellence in everything that you do. There is an old saying that you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Your resume may land you your first job, However, it's your reputation that will land you your career. And most of you already know, we live in a very competitive world, a global economy where you compete not only with the best and brightest in the United States, but the entire world. So strive every day
to become the absolute very best in your chosen field of study. Nothing, absolutely nothing, replaces competence. Embrace change, ask hard questions, challenge the status quo, and develop a lifelong thirst for knowledge and continuous learning. Become known for your integrity. Let your word be your bond. Be accountable for your actions. Be adaptive, innovative, and always remain relevant. Never become complacent and satisfied where you are. And always have and maintain a positive attitude. It's been said that ability is what you're capable of doing. Motivation determines what you do, however attitude, and attitude alone determines how well you do it. Fourth, maintain your moral and ethical compass. The ability to judge right from wrong, even when no one is watching, especially when no one is watching. Don't lose your way attempting to become someone that you're not. Stay true to yourself and avoid straying from your foundation, your family, your university, your church, and your community. As the late Texas Congresswoman Barbara Jordan once said, and I quote, some people spend their entire lives climbing the ladder of success only to reach the top and find out the ladder is leaning against the wrong building. Fifth, strive to be a good person, a good friend, a good colleague, a good family member, a good alumnus, and a positive role model for others to emulate. Be the person you want others to become. And no matter what level of success or status you achieve in life, always treat others with dignity and respect. From the CEO of the corporation to the janitor who maintains the facilities, in giving respect, you'll earn and receive respect. My final piece of advice is don't forget where you come from, your roots, your foundation here at UMUC. And never forget those who helped you along the way. Come back, reach back, and give back. If those who came before you had not done so, you would not have had the opportunity you enjoy today. You are standing on their shoulders. Let others stand on yours. To look out at all of you this morning gives me enormous hope. It gives me enormous pride. You look so confident so strong, so committed, so ready to take on the world, and also so ready for this general to get out of the way so you can receive your diploma. As I close, there's an old Greek proverb that says, a society grows great when men and women plant trees on whom shade they know they shall never sit. As you depart UMUC, Hold on to this unique experience, this acorn of knowledge, and take it with you down your road. Plant it somewhere for someone else so that they may someday enjoy the same shade under which you have prospered. Now go out and make a difference in the world. Live your best life and make all of us proud. Congratulations. May God continue to bless all of you and your families. May God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. University of Maryland University College is now University of Maryland Global Campus.